Welcome to the extra deck overview on my Zombiest custom archetype. Previously, I covered main deck monsters, spells, and traps. This time, I finish up with the synchro lineup, a level 4, 6, 8, and level 10 boss monster. The archetype is designed for synchro climbing, so the even levels help facilitate that. All of these monsters can be special summoned from the grave or banished zone, and are importantly targets for the wolves. Originally, there was the need for link monsters under Master Rule 4, so some of the support has been reworked accordingly. Without further introduction, I am starting with Zombiest Monstrosity. Level 4, Dark Beast, 2000 attack, 0 defense. 1 tuner plus 1 non-tuner Earth Beast monster. During your standby phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon another Zombiest monster from your graveyard or banish zone in face-up defense position. This is a level 4, and fairly generic. It does take an Earth Beast non-tuner, so you could make it with Nimble Momonga and Plague Spreader Zombie, for an average level 4 synchro. But in archetype, this monster helps with play extension. But only on your next turn for balance. This is not a once per turn effect, so getting multiple copies into the graveyard is beneficial. You can also return the card to graveyard to reuse the effect, even in the same turn with the burial from a different dimension. The main purpose of this monster is as a stepping stone for the higher level synchro monsters, especially with obedience schooled. All the synchros are beast type, but dark attribute instead of earth. Monstrosity plus either II or Shrew gives you Zombiest Overbear, which is a level six dark beast, 2400 attack, 2000 defense. One Zombiest Tuner, plus one or more non-tuner monsters. Once per turn, you may set a zombie spell or trap from your deck face down. This turn, that set card cannot be activated. This monster is relatively generic, with just a zombie's tuner, which is either a living or turned counterpart. Options. The preferred targets for this effect are Zombies Crisis and Revival, but Cycle is a good card for your next turn as well. This is a plus one, although with less initiative because of the turn delay. In my mind, the shallower pool of targets is enough to balance the card when compared to the much more open-ended Ancient Gear Drill, which did have a discard cost. This is another stepping stone, and also gives you a bit of a benefit along the way, which can then be used as material to bring out the next synchro, Zombiest Abomination, which is a level 8 Dark Beast, 2800 attack, 2000 defense requiring one Zombies Tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you may select two different Zombies monsters from your deck and show them to your opponent. Your opponent then selects one of those monsters. Add that card to your hand, then banish the other monster. This is another plus one, but not necessarily the strongest, since it only adds the monster to hand instead of special summoning it. This is not a big tempo card, but can be used to fuel zombies cycle. I think this painful choice-like effect is more interesting than a generic search card, giving your opponent a bit of opportunity to interact and make a meaningful decision since you cannot reveal two copies of the same monster. The banished monster can also offer a bit of value, as you can recur it directly to hand with shrew, to grave with panther, and even special summon it with wolf. There is a good amount of choice with this card, and I think it is good utility but not necessarily one that you want to end on. In fact, this is the first time you cannot use the lower level monster to synchro climb to the next one. Zombiest Protector is special. Big bad boss monster. It is level 10, dark beast, 3600 attack, zero defense. One zombies tuner, plus, and this is the important part, two non-tuner monsters. This monster cannot be targeted by cards or effects. While this card is face up on the field, it cannot be tributed. When this card would be destroyed, either by battle or card effect, you may banish two zombies monsters from your graveyard instead. This monster is tricky to get out since it requires exactly three monsters, which is a bit like Trishula. 3600 attack is massive, and I wanted it to be a major threat, but maybe 3200 might have been more appropriate. Zero defense is intentional as well. And not just for the normal reason, 
If the opponent can shift the protector into defense position without targeting, it is a pushover in battle. Rainbow Dragon had a weakness like that too, but this time it is there to offer another avenue for meaningful counterplay. Immunity to targeting and tributing makes the card a little harder to deal with, but not impossible. There is a limited number of times that you can prevent the destruction of the protector, based on depleting zombies in your graveyard, and the protector is still affected by other card effects. This card is hampered severely by lose one turn, but it can still be recurred pretty easily with the other support, so dealing with this monster more than once might be a problem for most decks. It is funny to think about stealing it with creature swap as well. There is a lot of room for counterplay, and efficient counterplay at that, but I am afraid that the card might still feel oppressive like Beals. More playtesting is needed. And of course, there is the design limiting card, Criston Halkifibrax, uh, Needle Fiber, which is not official support, but a card which has to be designed around. Any synchro strategy has to consider the card, and this card can be used to spam tuner monsters from the main deck. I am tempted to put a blanket, this monster cannot be used as link material, on all the tuners to prevent this card in the deck, but there has got to be a more elegant solution. Obedience Schooled locks this card out, which is a good start. In addition, the deck has only two tuner monsters which Needle Fiber could summon and the living zombies monsters do have that hard ones per turn restriction. But then there are the turn variants which could also bring out needle fiber. Not to mention splashing plague spreader zombie or even plant synchro favorites. Needle fiber is really a bother to design around, and I anticipate the card will be banned eventually. In light of needle fiber, I will only be using in archetype support for the combo demonstration, but I am aware that these cards do not exist in a vacuum. Activate Zombies Cycle, Discard Panther. Banish Panther, Special Summon Turned Panther. Activate Effect, Send Wolf to the Graveyard. Banish Wolf, Special Summon the Turned Wolf. Activate Effect, Special Summon your Banished Wolf. At this point, you can make a rank 4 or Synchro Summon Abomination for a plus 1. You can also Normal Summon Unicorn, then Synchro into Protector. Banish Unicorn to get out the turn variant, and get out Overbear to set Zombies Crisis or Revival, which is a pretty strong first turn, with an option for recovery or disruption, and a boss monster on the field, but not necessarily an unbreakable board. You can go a lot further by splashing cards like Ayer's Rock Sunrise, Inferno Reckless Summon, Dinotherium, Aloof Lupine, Uniflora, and even Beast Soul Swap but I think this is a reasonable starting place. This is the end of my initial run of support, but I actually have a card or two that I made based on community feedback. I asked a hypothetical question, and I am surprised and excited by the comments left on these videos. I will be addressing some of the answers to the what-ifs in the following video in the series. The deadline for submitting comments to be featured in the follow-up video is a week from today, with the actual video coming out the Wednesday after. The support for this series has been wonderful, and I have a whole folder of hypotheticals to explore in the future, so there will be a lot of What If Wednesdays on the horizon.